Good morning and welcome. Our service this morning begins with an opening sentence from page 39 of your prayer book. Alleluia, Christ is risen, the Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia, the Lord is risen indeed. O come, let us adore him. Alleluia. We'll now say together the Jubilate. O be joyful in the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Be ye sure that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. O go your way into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and speak good of his name. For the Lord is gracious, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth from generation to generation. This is a reading from the Gospel according to St. John. Jesus said to the Samaritan, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father, neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father seeks such as these to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming, who is called the Christ. When he comes, he will proclaim all things to us. Jesus said to her, I am he, the one who is speaking to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Today we commemorate the feast day of Julian of Norwich. Julian's feast day is normally appointed for May 8th, but she is a pretty big deal in the terms of the theology and teachings of the church and the, some of the ways we understand God. So I'm going to read you a little bit about her. Of Julian's early life, we know little, only the probable date of her birth. Her own writings and her revelations of divine love are concerned only with her visions or showings that she experienced when she was 30 years old rather than with the details of her biography. Julian had been gravely ill and was given last rites. Suddenly on the seventh day, all pain left her and she had 15 visions of Christ's passion. These brought her great peace and joy. From that time, I desired oftentimes to learn what was our Lord's meaning, she wrote. And 15 years after I was answered in ghostly understanding, wouldst thou learn the Lord's meaning in this thing? Learn it well, love was his meaning. Who showed it thee? Love. What showed he thee? Love. Wherefore showed it he? For love. Hold thee therein, and thou shalt learn and know more than the same. Thus it was I learned that love was our Lord's meaning. Julian had long desired three gifts from God, the mind of his passion, bodily sickness and youth, and three wounds of contrition, of compassion, of willful longing toward God. Her illness brought her the first two wounds, which then passed from her mind. The third, willful longing, or divinely inspired longing, never left her. She became a recluse and anchoress at Norwich soon after her recovery from illness, living in a small dwelling attached to a parish church. Even in her lifetime, she was famed as a mystic and spiritual counselor and was frequently visited by clergymen and laypersons, including the mystic, mystic Marjorie Kemp. Kemp says of Julian, This anchoress was expert in knowledge of our Lord and could give good counsel. I spent much time with her talking of the love of our Lord Jesus Christ. Julian understood that God was father and mother to us and understood Christ as exemplifying this maternal face of God. Thus Jesus Christ that doeth good against evil is our very mother. We have our being in him where the ground of motherhood beginneth. As verily as God is our Father, so verily God is our Mother. Julian's book is a tender and beautiful exposition of God's eternal and all-embracing love, showing how his charity toward the human race is exhibited in the Passion. 
Again and again, she referred to Christ as our courteous Lord. Many have found strength in the words the Lord had given her. I can make all things well. I will make all things well. I shall make all things well. And thou canst see for thyself that all manner of things shall be well. That's about a little bit about Julian of Norwich. Uh, whenever I think of her, I remember I'm reminded of a friend in, in high school and college and seminary, all the same person who, and continues to be a friend of ours, whose uh, Wi-Fi password was all well. And I thought that was a neat way of putting something in there. That's before we knew that your, your Wi-Fi passwords were probably supposed to be pretty secure uh, and difficult to guess. But when she told me that, and I, you know, I had never heard that expression, so it must have been in college when she said that. She said, Julia of Norwich, all, all will be well, all will be well, and all manner of things will be well. It's a, uh, that's a hard thing to remember sometimes, a hard thing to hold on to sometimes, but that is our hope in Christ, right? That while there may be earthly suffering, while there may be physical suffering, while there may be some sort of suffering in this life, in the life to come, we anticipate and we hope and we long for a time when all manner of things will be well. That might be something that is um, us saying that in our current context uh, as people who are able to watch this. Uh, I'm able to record it here with no major concerns. You're able to watch it at home with no major concerns of your safety. At least that's the assumption I'm working with right now. For us to say, oh, everything's going to be okay, it might seem somewhat patronizing. It might seem somewhat glib, but that is our hope. That is our hope that for all of creation, all who God loves, all who, long, all who God longs for, both God the Father and God the Mother. I, the other image I have in my mind, I can't believe it wasn't the picked out, the appointed reading for today. You know, Jesus says, I will gather all of you like a hen gathers her brood, gathers them under her wings. That's what we're thinking about when we're thinking about all manner of things will be well. Maybe not in this life, but certainly in the next. And our hope rests on that promise, and that expectation that all manner of things will be well. So when you're having struggle, when you're having trouble remembering that, when you're not sure if you believe that or you trust that, remember my friend's Wi-Fi password all well. All shall be well, all shall be well, and all manner of things shall be well. Julian of Norwich. Amen. And now let us reaffirm our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us and grant us thy salvation. Endue thy ministers with righteousness and make thy chosen people joyful. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in thee can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under thy care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let thy way be known upon earth, thy saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, 
and sustain us with thy Holy Spirit. Triune God, Father and Mother to us all, who in thy compassion didst grant to your servant Julian many revelations of thy nurturing and sustaining love. Move our hearts like hers to seek thee above all things, for in giving us thyself thou givest us all. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this new day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that we, being ordered by thy governance, may do always what is righteous in thy sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who did stretch out thine arms of love on the hard wood of the cross, that everyone might come within the reach of thy saving embrace. So clothe us in thy spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know thee to the knowledge and love of thee, for the honor of thy name. Amen. At this time, I invite any prayers of thanksgiving or intercession you might want to offer. Pray, O Lord, for all those in our community, in our world who are suffering, in body, mind, or spirit, especially those who continue to suffer from the pains of COVID-19. Remember especially the people of India who are being excessively hit with the effects of this virus right now. Pray for the people in our own country who are seeking healing, seeking care. Pray, O Lord, that you will be with all those who continue to suffer from the pains of persecution, separation, victims of acts of violence and terrorism. And we continue to pray for all members of our own community who have been affected by natural disasters, other events beyond their control that are causing them trouble in their hearts and minds. We pray for all members of our armed forces who continue to serve both at home and abroad. All these prayers we lift up to you, O God, as we say together the words of the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, thine unworthy servants, do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all men. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for thine inestimable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful, and that we show forth thy praise not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication unto thee, and has promised to thy well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, thou wilt be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth and in the world to come life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. Thank you again for joining us today as we commemorate the feast day of Julian of Norwich. No major or pressing announcements from me, as you know, we continue to have services in person here in the little church at 7 a.m., 10 a.m., and 5.30 p.m. each Wednesday. We're in the big church at 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. each Sunday, and then we have these online options, 7.30 a.m. on Wednesdays on YouTube and Facebook and Instagram, 
and 6.30 p.m. on Wednesday afternoons or Wednesday evenings at, at, at 6.30 p.m. on Instagram. I think that's everything. I think that's all I need to mention right now. Um, continue to be safe. Continue to be well. Make sure you get your vaccines if you are eligible and if you're able. If you have any concerns or worries about that, let us know in the church office, and we're happy to talk you through it and let you know what our experiences were. I think that's it. God's blessings and God's peace to all of you. Be safe. Be well. Remember, all manner of things shall be well. We'll see everybody next time. Bye-bye.